Hey guys, Jill here again from Unbound Footprints. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to have a successful beehive. There are tons of bees out in the natural wild that just fly around and do their thing, trying really, really hard to keep everything going for us to be able to have yummy food and all of that, but I wanna teach you how to have your own beehive. Here I am with my very, very first bees ever. Um, these are um, nooks, they call it, or nucleuses, where you buy a package of bees and it comes with one queen and some sugar water in that little plastic crate. Um, the nook box is very, very cool. As you can see, they're kind of in an upside down pyramid shape. There's a few bees that escape here and there, but for the most part, there's a big can of sugar water in the middle. The sugar water keeps them attracted there, plus their queen is in there somewhere. Um, as for me, being a first-time beekeeper, when I recorded this, that I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to open this and they're all going to come at me. Well, they did not. They hung out with their queen. They hung out with their sugar water. They hung out very calmly because they had a really good queen. And they were adapting to her and making sure that everything was good. Here she is. She's awful cute. She's in this little wooden box with this nice frame of screen on the outside. The reason is because she has to be trapped in there in order for them to get used to her and her used to them. She puts off a pheromone that has them all excited to come and help her out of this box. On either end, there is sugar packed in there so that they have time to adapt. Here is a great assortment of things that you're gonna need for your beehive. I don't know what you've got in your apiary, but these are the things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a beehive. You're gonna need some tools. You're gonna need some gloves. You're gonna need a hat to keep you safe. This is the place where I order all my stuff from. These are different frames that you can order, different ways to beekeep. It's all personal. This here is a sugar water mixture that I make up for my bees. I use Honey Bee Healthy, and that is a lot of essential oils and things like that that I put in the sugar water to keep them healthy. This here is my mentor, Gabe. He's been amazing. He's showing me all the ropes of all the things I needed to do. We're using our sugar water mixture, pouring it in spray bottles so we can spritz it on the hive to keep our bees excited about eating something instead of coming after us. Here we are, we dumped all of our bees and our queen, placed her in her little cage inside this hive. We did not open the cage, we're letting them do that. That is their job, their whole job is to take care of that queen, making sure she's good to go. Here I am in my super cute little hat. I just had such a good time that day. This here is a couple of weeks after we'd placed them in the hive. We are coming back to check our sugar water, make sure that they're good to go. Um, I do have a slight problem this day. As you can see in the red circle, they have not drawn much comb on this, actually on this frame. The bare naked spot there is kind of a problem because we want them to draw there. That's where we placed our feeder so that they would have adequate amounts of sugar water at the ready. That little black thing on the right hand side there is basically a little trap to hold all the sugar water and it has a little area they can get down in there. This here was a big problem that I didn't know was going to happen, but it did. This here I call crazy comb. I don't know what else to call it because they just kind of did their own thing. They made this comb not attached to my frame because they had too much room between the frames. I didn't know that was a problem. I figured it'd be fine, but this is what happened. As you can see, it's not even really touching the frame. It's attached in a couple spots, but they actually raised young on this comb. So I needed to make sure it went back in the hive. I did some some fun things to it and placed it back into the hive without some plastic so they could keep it. Here is, if you look really closely, there is a lot of bees here, but there is a lot of capped brood, which is great. Brood is what babies come from. So you need a lot of new babies all the time to keep this hive going. This on the left hand side, the bottom left, there is some pollen. It's different colors because of different plants that each bee has visited. They pack that full of pollen and they use that for to eat and to do all the things that they need to do in the hive. So without that, it's a big deal. Here she is, the queen. She's been freed and she's standing on a pile of honey. They have not finished the honey yet, but they're working on it. Here is a couple little interesting things. The queen bee is to the top. The red is eggs that she's laid. The blue is semi-maturing larva. 
The purple is actually almost ready to be capped. That is happy larva. That's going to turn into a bee. On the upper left-hand corner, there is capped honey for them to eat. We leave that. We let them have that. Whenever there's brood and honey in the same frame, you let it be. You let them have it to eat. There's a lot going on here. There is honeycomb being filled. There's capped honey. There's capped brood and bee larva at the top there. Um, there's also kind of a little bit of a queen cell on the right-hand side, that comb that looks a little goofy. That is a queen cell that they're thinking about using potentially. Whenever I didn't want them to re-queen, I would see that and I would just cut it out and get rid of it. As much fun as beekeeping is, there's always going to be problems. There's going to be things you need to look for, things that you need to guard against. There's going to be all kinds of things that you need to do as a be a proactive beekeeper. Here are just a few of them. This is a Varroa mite. Varroa mites get into the hive, they weaken the bees, they shorten their life, and they can cripple the bees causing ultimate colony breakdown and the death of the hive. Nothing is more heartbreaking than coming out to your hive and seeing this. This is super, super sad. You know that that poor little guy suffered. The next is the treatments that you can do for it. There is a mite strip treatment. There is an oxalic acid treatment. Both do cause some death of bees, but the death ratio to the death of mites, way better. This here is also another terrible thing you can come into. This was a super weak hive of mine, and I was like, man, I really hope that they can get it together. This here is wax moths. They come in, there are these little buggers that eat all the cap off of your brood and kill your hive, basically. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is bears. Bears come in, they love, 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 love honey. They will come in, wreak havoc, leave this giant mess, and your bees have no other choice than to leave and find somewhere safe to be. Beehive absconding can be one of the most frustrating things from beekeeping because you are left with no answers. If you don't have your beehive right out in the yard where you can see it, then you can come back to an empty hive and have so many questions about what happened here today. The bees just decide, today's the day, we're out. Foul brood, this one is the worst. You must burn your beehive afterward. It comes in, it basically does a giant number on your hive. It makes it sticky and gooey and there's nothing left for your bees to be able to live through. That one is ultimate death. There will be no using that equipment again. If you do, the same thing will happen. So bees, they're a lot of work. There's a lot of problems that can come along with them, but they are completely worth having. You say, why keep them? Because without them, we would not have apples. They pollinate apple trees, pear trees, all of the yummy fruits we love. They pollinate squash, mostly about 85% of squash are pollinated by bees, all different kinds of them. Blueberries and cherries are 90% pollinated by bees. That's pretty big. Almonds, 100% pollinated by bees. Flowers, anything in your garden that's beautiful, you can thank a bee. Honey, the liquid gold, we absolutely love it. All products that are used from hair care to recipes that you're going to make in your kitchen, we use a ton of it. Oh yeah, don't forget about the comb. It's edible too. Millions of dollars are made from these little guys' hard work every single day. I want to thank you for joining me today while we walk through the things about bees and how awesome they are and how treacherous it can be. Thank you so much for everything. And please, if you haven't already, please subscribe and like. It helps me out a ton. I just want to ask you one last thought for the day. How you living?